Welcome inside another BlueGoldNews.com pregame. Matt Keller along with Kevin Kinder taking a look at tonight's matchup between the Mountaineers and Texas Tech. Kevin, we're looking at a top 20 matchup, but the Red Raiders are a little bit on the downside right now. They're beat up much like Iowa State was coming in. What do you see from them and how can they offset what was a rumored concussion and then obviously the toe injury to Keenan Evans? Yeah, Evans is a great player. He's been playing through this, obviously not at 100%, but it's kind of hard to tell looking at the way he's been playing on the court. Another great matchup between he and Javon Carter, two of the best guards in the league and in the country. Texas Tech has lost three games in a row, so that one and it's kind of that wounded animal thing. You're kind of worried about them. Uh, you know, you just don't see them losing a bunch of games, especially the way they play defense. So while they're not as beat up as Iowa State, you know, I don't think the rotation is going to be that hard. It could have a little bit of an effect, but you know they want to get back on a winning track heading toward the postseason. Yeah, that momentum is big for them going in. We, we, t we touched a little bit about this in the, in the pregame last time. Is there that much of a difference between a second and third in, in, in the Big 12 right now? Because you, you're not jumping between one and four where you're, you're looking to, to uh, reverse the seating and trying to avoid the one seed. Kind of what's your take on that? From our perspective and some fans' perspective, maybe not, but it was kind of funny. I asked several players about that after last game, and a couple of them looked at me like I was crazy and said, of course there is, because those are wins. And the wins obviously lead to better seeds, but you know it's winning the games. Uh, Javon looked over at, uh, or uh, actually Dexter looked over at Javon when asked the question and said, like, man, that's a little crazy. You know, I mean, they want to win. So, yeah, for them, it's important. And I think when you look back a couple years from now, you say, hey, finish second in the Big 12 and another great year for the league, that's an achievement. Well, and Javon arguably put it best when somebody asked him, and he said, is it a game? Then we want to win. There's no Now, when you look at senior night right now with Dax and Javon, does it, does it change any approach of a player, do you think, from your perspective, being an upperclassman last time down the carpet, you know, the emotional embrace with the family and Bob Huggins, does that, how much does that affect the game? Or is it a lot like football, you take that first shot and then that's out the window? I think it can affect it a little bit. We've seen some seniors come out and admittedly where they had some jitters and just wanted to play really well in their last game and had some things go a little bit sideways. You know, yeah, I think once you get into the flow of the game, that can go away. You know, I'm wondering maybe you don't back it up a little bit more. The women's team did it a little bit before the last interviews uh, or the last introductions and things they had. They had a little more gap between then and the start of the game. Maybe that's something you might consider doing. But yeah, I think it can have an effect. I think some players are emotional, but Javon has always been very businesslike. I don't see that affecting him tonight. We'll see how that plays out. If you look at the two players, uh, similarly defensive in that they're 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 really uh, high end, give a lot of energy. Dax probably um, known more for his defense than offense. Javon as well, but they're, they've got a slightly stylistic difference to them as well. When you look at each of their contributions, what jumps out the most at you of their four years here as a, as a Mountaineer? For Dax, it's athleticism. Uh, you know, he was one of the best offensive rebounding guards, I think, you know, the images that stick in your mind are him flying in, you know, catching the ball and dunking a bag through a couple in the postseason last year, games we were at out in San Jose that were just monster dunks at critical times in the game. I think those kind of things stick with you. And his passion and his belief in himself. You know, Bob Huggins was asked about him starting when he was a freshman. He said, well, he just walked out there like he belonged, so I left him there. And maybe that's a little apocryphal, but I think there's something to that. He has confidence in himself, even if things were going bad at times, that he's, he could succeed. Uh, Javon, just a guy, a self-made guy, uh, a guy in the mold of a Kevin Jones, uh, Deshaun Butler, guys like that, that were really good coming in, but just continued to improve, didn't rest on his laurels, and that's why he has these incredible numbers. Everywhere you look in the record book, you're going to see his name. I think it's interesting, and most people don't realize that Dax has actually started more career games than what Javon has. That gets lost in the shuffle. Okay, keep it right here at Blue and Gold News and BlueGoldNews.com. This, once again, is West Virginia's pregame against Texas Tech, the Mountaineers and the Red Raiders in a top 20 matchup.